July 27th, 2022. We're heading over to a service call in Syosset, New York, which is in Nassau County on Long Island. Customer watches our YouTube channel, reached out to me on my uh, pipedoc.net website, filled out a web form, actually did the live chat with the robot actually. He actually did the live chat with the robot. I got the transcript of the, him, the conversation he had with AI. I got the transcript of the, of the, of the AI botted. <laughs> oh my gosh, if we take two? <laughs> no, fuck it, let him roll. Um, he had a conversation with my website yesterday and uh, his air conditioning is not working. I'm gonna go there and see what's going on, guys. All right, stay tuned. Hope you'll like it and hopefully I can teach Christian a thing or two before he goes back to Florida. Florida. Pablo, honey, come to Florida. 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 Let's go! We're a little early, is that alright? Yeah, it's alright. Okay, what's okay. wrong? Um, so the AC is not cooling. Like okay. It started from yesterday. Um, but on Monday it was fine. Okay, so now yeah. it's not working at all? No, it's not working. It's okay. Cooling, like, uh, is the filter clean? I just changed the filter. Okay, and the thermostat is off right now or on right it's now? It's off. It's off, okay. You want to turn that on? We'll start. We'll start outside. Okay. Okay. Um, and the vent. air comes out of the vents. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So let's right. just turn the air conditioning on and let's set it to a temperature so the system would normally cool. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Which side of the house am I going? Uh, that way. Side. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Right. We have an Amana. Mm -hmm. I don't think they got referred to it. All right, we're at the, uh, we're at the 410 gauge in the tool bag. Ooh, that didn't sound too good at all. All right, Air Force None has the Testo 557s. We're gonna hook up the Testo to the service ports. In case you're wondering, Amana is manufactured by Goodman. As you see right there, I'm gonna guess that we don't have refrigerant in the system and the red hose is on the wrong side. Red hose goes on the, the lead. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm in the wrong hands. All right, looks like we have a little bit of pressure there, but definitely an undercharged condition it looks like. I didn't, I didn't hear like any pressure come out of that at all. I don't swing it on. Yeah. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, 62. We're definitely low on refrigerant here. Which means they got a leak. It's probably in the evaporator. Hook that up. Let's see what kind of pressures we're working with. What do I hear leaking? Okay. It's coming from here. All right, pressures are balanced. We don't have enough refrigerant oh, in the system. Let's go tell them the great news. All right, in a few minutes. You don't have enough refrigerant in the system. So is that leaking? That means you have a leak, or leaks, plural. Okay. There's a couple things we could do. Well, it's five things that we could do. I'm gonna give you all five of them because regardless of what you do, you're gonna sign a piece of paper or a form strictly because there's more lawyers and there's more of us out there. Okay. So I need to explain this to you. Number one, you could do nothing. If we do nothing, it'll be doing like it did before we got here, which is absolutely the same thing, not cooling. Number two, we can add the refrigerant that you need. Uh, Consider that like you have, you need a blood transfusion, but you don't fix the cut, okay? So it's gonna leak out again. Okay. Number three, we add more refrigerant and we try to add a sealant. The sealant is designed to seal up small leaks. It's not guaranteed to work, but it's something's better than nothing. The sealant also incorporates an ultraviolet dye. So shall we look for the leak in the future? We look for the dye, it makes our life easier. Okay. Number four, we actually do a leak search. We suck out what you have in the system, uh, or we we use a, a equipment to try to you know and scan the entire system. We go in the attic, we check that we take out the unit apart, 
We look for the, at the evaporator coil, see if the leak is there, and then we try to look outside. It's time consuming, um, but it's the fourth option. And number five is replace the entire system. I'm not saying do that, but it's, it's not a brand new system either. How old is the system? I just bought the house like just a couple <laughs> yeah i'm thinking maybe it's like it's definitely after 2010 um but it's not it's not like a year or two old it looks like maybe it's like five or six or seven years old i don't have to look at the serial number and look it up for you okay. um but that's where we're at labor is 225 an hour uh puron is 115 per pound if you want to add the sealant that's 170 bucks uh if you want to do a leak search it's time and material you know that's at that at that rate um most people, again, you don't, we don't know the severity of the leak. We don't know how long it's been leaking for. Um, it's a gamble, whatever you do. Yeah. Even if we do a leak search, let's say we spend, I don't know, a couple hours here, and we tell you, okay, the evaporator coil is leaking. You're buying a new evaporator, at the minimum. That's thousands upon thousands of dollars. If we do a leak search and it's the outdoor unit, thousands of thousands of dollars to replace the outdoor unit. If, if you're lucky and it leaks on a piece of copper you know, that's exposed, we can repair that, it's fine. But you can't fix coils without compromising the integrity of the coil. Yeah. Makes sense? Yep. What would you like to do? Uh, Realistically, you probably need maybe around three to four pounds of refrigerant based on what the pressures that I see there are. So it's completely empty right now? No, not completely. It has some pressure in there. But it also thinks, you know, pressure equals temperature it thinks it's 25 degrees outside. Okay. <laughs> so you need, you, need a, you need a good amount. Not like 10 pounds, but you, you need probably at least three to five pounds, somewhere in that range. Okay. Um, let's do the seal lamp first. Okay. And then if, if it still leaks in, okay. we'll try to replace it. Okay, I'm, I add the seal after I add the refrigerant. So if I see the pressures are not uh, cooperating with me, we're gonna come back and have a little conversation. Before, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna put seal in if I know there's a problem. So let's, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, that's how you explain options to your client, allowing them to make the best educated decision. Lay all the cards on the table, ask them how they would like to proceed. Let's add, re let's add our sealant and our refrigerant and get them up. Okay, when we add refrigerant, right, we have our suction line is the blue hose that goes in the large pipe, which is normally insulated. The red hose goes on the liquid line. It's high pressure, right? We have for charging with 410A, so it, it gets charged or added as a as a liquid. You see, it says this end up for a liquid. 410A because it's a blended refrigerant. You have to charge it. You have to charge the system in a liquid uh, fashion. Unlike R22, that you can re, you can refill as a vapor. Uh, my preferred way of charging either is as a liquid, you add a half a, half a pound at a time, and uh, you let that let the system, you know, let that circulate in. But if, you, if you're doing it a vapor, you can dump as, as much as you want, as fast as you want, because it's all good. All right. When we hook up our hoses, we're going to, we crack open, you know, let a little bit of air, a refrigerant out of there, and there, it's called purging the hoses. So we did that already on both and this, and we already added... Oh, what happened here? Turned off? Yeah. We're at 2.4 pounds. And we're still a little low there. All right. I'm just emptying out the rest of the, the tank. There wasn't much left in there, but we want to make sure that our pressures are where they should be. And to check that, we're going to take off this panel and look All at the right, charge. cover off. And we don't have a charging chart here. We have a... Uh, <clears throat> troubleshooting chart and our wiring schematic a little bit of dirt here we're gonna get the uh, the M18 blower and blow all this cocky out of here it's dirt and dust so we're a little low on there we're at 2.5 pounds thanks Peter for losing my screw and I have to wrap it with tape thanks a lot Peter it's just about empty so let's Close. We'll close this as well. And disconnect that. Turn it off, of course. There's a little bit of vapor in there left, but not much. Not much. If you really want to uh, nickel and dime, I guess you could take a recovery machine and take whatever whatever's out of there out. But um, no. Okay, there's the other 
410A. Hook that up to there. We're probably going to be where it was 2.5. We're probably going to be around 3.5, even 4 pounds, probably. Yes. Like 4.3. I'm going to guess 4.3. Nah, not that high. I think we're going to be at maybe another pound because our pressures are just above freezing right now. At no, that's total. Total? No, I'm thinking 3.5. 3.5. So, you see, he cracked open the, the valve on the top of the 25-pound jug of 410A. And now I'm just going to crack this open. Get that air out of there. Purge the line. Flip it upside down. We're going to zero out the scale. And I'm going to add another half a pound right now. So we'll open up our charging valve. This is the four port digital manifold. We're going to open this up, crack it open a little bit. And we're going to add that half a pound. All right, I'm sorry I didn't catch it on video, but to add the sealant, here's the easy seal, All right? Hooked up to my low side port. I got my low side hose hooked up to that. I'm not using the refrigerant anymore, but what I do is I'm going to crack open the high side and then slowly open just the low side, bringing some of that high pressure through there and it runs through. That's it. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. So now I'm going to remove my high side hose. And if you notice, these have the low loss fittings. See? Low loss fittings. So they're still charging here. So now I'm going to open up that and that and with that high pressure that was in this red hose is now going back into the low side so we're just basically putting that back into the system easy piece. all right air force none used the m18 blower we vacuumed out the electrical compartment which contains that contactor capacitor looks like a little bit of a relay right there but I want to show him, and I also want to show the folks sitting at home right now, how to test that capacitor while the system is running. We are going to dynamically test that capacitor right there. Now, for sake of video, I know that it's a 45.5 dual capacitor. Do you know how to test a capacitor while the system is running? No. Okay. First time for everything, right? Yeah. I am going to pull up my handy-dandy notebook. All right, I am going to go to the HVAC school app, right? And we're going to do an under load capacitor test. So the first thing we're going to do is, right, we're going to take, we're going to take a look at this chart right here, right? And we're going to take a voltage across the capacitor. Okay. Okay. So we take a voltage reading and we're going to go between Herm and Common and get a reading. Okay. okay? Perm and common, make sure I set it to voltage. Yep. Okay, make sure. All right, and let's see what we're getting there. 30. 354.4. Okay, so let's go here. 354.4. And now the amperage of the motor's start winding. Now, we need to take, let's go back to the little drawing there. We're going to take an amperage reading on that. Herm wire, right? Herm. Herm is going to be, it appears to be that yellow. Yeah. Is it the yellow wire? Yeah. All right, okay. And we have an amperage reading of 5.8. So we're gonna go back to the thing, 5.8, and it's a rated 45. And we do calculate. Now look at this, under load test result. The amount of variation is acceptable. Right, it was reading a 45 and it gave us a 43.42. Right, that's good. Okay. Very good. You want to test the fan side? Let's test the fan side. Sure. Same principle. Okay, we're gonna take a voltage across the capacitor. Common and uh, fan. Common and C and fan. Okay. Uh, still on amperage. Three seventy one. Three seventy one point three. So we're gonna type in three seventy one point three. Right, and now I assume fan. Fan is the brown wire. And our amperages is point six. Right? We're gonna do the amperage start warning point six. 
I have the capacitor rated microfarads at five. We're gonna calculate. And, ooh, right, it's reading 4.29. The capacitor is more than 10% below specification and should be replaced if the measurement was taken correctly. Shall we try again, just in case? You wanna double check your work? Yes, By all means, let's do it again. We're gonna take a voltage across capacitor between fan and common. Oh, okay. right there. Fan and common, and we have three, four. Oh, you gotta keep it steady there, Chris. I'm not moving. It's moving around a lot. Okay, it's three. 43.8. Three, 43.8. The. It shouldn't make a difference. We can use the alligator clips to go on the end of the leads if you like, but to get some more style connection, let's check for amperage now on the brown wire. And our amperage is 0.6. Still 0.6. All right. All right. So we're kind of like borderline. The capacitor is 5 to 10% low, which generally would be considered acceptable, but may vary by the company policy. My company policy is 10%, and I'm going to elect that we keep this, but we're going to let the customer know of what we found. And maybe he wants to replace it now, maybe he does, but we'll ask. All right. We gave them options for the... Oh, you're so annoying. We gave them options for the dual capa uh, capacitor, and the conversation then went to replacement of equipment, and he sees the YouTube channel, and I'd like to give him a shout-out. <laughs> uh, maybe next year we'll get a Bosch IDS 2.0, but right now... Um, Hopefully longer than a year. He's up and running. We added a total of four pounds with the sealant and the old ultraviolet dye. And, you know, if we're lucky, if he's lucky, we won't see him again for a couple years. Maybe next year just for a tune-up. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed this educational and also entertaining video. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Until next time, be well. God bless. Stay safe.